Metro Exodus is a game that went under many people's radar due to it being the first victim of the Epic Games Store anti-consumer practices. Was this done to guarantee profit knowing that the product is in a bad state, or just because of pure greed? Let's dive into it and find out if Metro Exodus is a gem that was dealt a bad hand, or a game that should remain under the radar, starting with the story. You play as a silent protagonist by the name of Artyom, who dreams of finding life outside of the metro tunnels he and many others call home. He chases this dream by venturing top ground with his radio and attempts to find a sign of life. More of nothing. Oh, shut up, woman! On the way back from one such venture, Artyom and his wife Anna encounter something they could not believe. A plane. Long story short, ya boy yoinks that motherfucker and sets on a journey throughout Russia to find a place he and his crew can call home. Your first stop is the Volga, an introduction to Metro's semi-open world level design in a breathtaking setting of separate islands inhabited by a fishy bunch. Their god do be looking kinda fresh though. There's something really special about this map. Everything calls to be investigated, even basic shacks somehow spark curiosity and intrigue. To reach some of these locations you'll need to find a boat, which is a bit slow and tedious to use, but it's worth it because in these minor locations you can find materials, upgrades, and lore bits in the form of tapes and notes. One of Metro's strongest aspects is immersion. All of the information you need is conveyed in a seamless manner. Radiation level, time left on filters, and stealth statuses are found on your wrist, while the map and objective are found on your notepad. Even the inventory doesn't freeze the world around you, meaning you have to consider where you pop it open to craft meds or modify your weapons. Furthermore, your weapons will collect dirt and be more prone to jamming the longer you explore, so you'll have to stop by a workbench to clean them. Usually a bed is found near said workbenches if you feel like changing the time of day. All of this greatly strengthens the experience of the game. But there's more. The way you go about things will change the end result, making you feel the burden of responsibility at the end of each chapter. Being a goody two-shoes will give positive karma, which is indicated by a light blue tint. While on the other side of the spectrum, being a naughty boy and killing everyone will accumulate negative karma, which is indicated by a brown tint. Vibe check. Each chapter is followed by a road trip that gives you time to get to know your crew, the people that you pick up on the way, and see the interactions between them. Character development and plot points are revealed in these train rides, along with the reasons to stop off in new areas visited throughout the game. My personal gripe with this is that Artyom is a silent protagonist. He'll be bombarded by dozens of sentences and add nothing to the conversation. Like bro, just do something, throw some gang signs. Fucking blow a rape whistle, what the fuck's wrong with you? Fear not, these are completely optional and can be skipped almost instantly without losing sight of the bigger picture. Your next stop is the Caspian, a polar opposite to everything Metro has been up until now visually. Threats remain largely the same, bad guys with pew pews and those who think that Borderlands 3 is good. Exploration here takes a slight nosedive, the vast majority of points of interest are just rusted out boats and bandit camps, but the few good locations are just top tier stuff, man. Now let's enter the uh oh stinky taiga forest, the map that follows the Caspian is a solid yikes. It's designed in a linear way but allows you to explore. Not that there is any incentive to do so, there is nothing interesting going on. Pretty much everything around you is a stronghold of hostile tree humpers. On top of that, memorable encounters are very scarce, to the point where if this level was removed from the game, I wouldn't feel like I lost much. Now I'm not saying this chapter is the worst thing to ever exist, but it's very underwhelming in comparison to everything that led up to it. Also the way it tunnels your playstyle into kill nothing or kill everything just sucks. The human AI is really stupid at times, to the point where you can just slowly walk up to him for a knockout. There's two things that broke immersion, for me at least, and those are quick time events, which last way too long for my liking, and the melee sound, which sounds like something out of a cartoon. And finally the thing that really irked me is how you can't pick up a pair of binoculars in the Volga because you're supposed to get them from a scripted encounter with Kriest. The reason this irks me is if you do something prior than being told to do so, you get a different line of dialogue acknowledging your preemptive actions. I know this is a very petty thing to be irked about, but that's how it be sometimes. Just like the game, I want to end on a high note. Novosibirsk. The dramatic finale to this journey set in a Moscow clone with a much more sinister and dark undertone to it. Here you will experience horror and dread like no other chapter in the game, both in all too familiar metro tunnels and the locations they will bring you to. I wish I could elaborate further, but this is really something you have to experience firsthand. To conclude, Metro Exodus is a journey like no other, a journey through post-apocalyptic Russia that does not get the recognition it deserves due to the anti-consumer practices it took part in, resulting in many fans of the franchise refusing to play it. The game offers 10 chapters which span over 30 plus hours, exceptional graphical fidelity, a unique dedication to immersion, and a story that hooks you in regardless of your familiarity with the world of Metro. The game does need improvement in some parts, and outright change in others, but as it stands, Metro Exodus is amazing. Hey, I'm